Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I'll just uh, start early so I can finish early today and maybe do some sports later. Yeah, this presentation and this talk will fall into four points, which is the first one is time management, second one managing finance, third one influencers, and four controlling. So, but our company's policy is very, very strict and very important because, as you can see, as you can see now, some people don't show up for the meetings and they confirmed it and said, yeah, I will come next week, I'll come tomorrow. Uh, so if people are in the city itself, we would say we confirm easily and they get confirmation. But um, if they're not from the city, no matter they're out of the city or they're in another country, they have to send us the train or the flight room confirmation and let us know when they depart and when they arrive. Because only then we can make sure that this time is confirmed. Because sometimes people coming up and say, you know, uh, I will come next Tuesday, you know, at nine o'clock, you know. And then they would say, oh, uh, I'm coming on Wednesday because my flight got delayed or I didn't book my ticket yet and I checked the timing and I suddenly, oh no, I'm not with you, there is first in the morning, oh, let, let's do it actually next month, is much better, you know. But the time and effort we have, prepare all documents, all the files, do all the research about the products, about the sales processes, it's not something we disregard, I mean, we consider it clearly, you know. So, what we do is, as I said earlier, video confirmation, train, book, train ticket, or flight book confirmation. Then we receive it, we send you the meeting confirmation letter. Not you are deciding by yourself anything and come up. We had some people coming up in the past and saying, uh, I'll confirm my flight and my, my train ticket and tomorrow 9 o'clock. We work overtime, we work until 12 o'clock in the night time, prepare all documents, we check our retailer's databases, sales reports, everything. We gather in the big meeting room, like with the finance department, procurement department, sales department, everybody together, you know, we bounce around some ideas, we come up with those action plans, and one guy saying, oh, uh, I only want to check in if I have time and can make it, you know. Ah, I said, seriously. Anyways, if you're one of those people who come actually to the meeting and show up, that's awesome. Uh, then you need to take your um, ID card or your passport with you and register yourself at the lobby. They will take a photo of you and you have to register. They give you a door card where you go for access gates, you have to go for the 25th floor of a building, and then you register yourself at the receptionist. Then you will be seated, and have to wait until we are available. And you want And these are the priorities we have, and especially uh, when working with large firms, we have to be on time because imagine you're working with a big retailer or big group and they're coming as well. We have to be prepared and prepare all the numbers. So what I didn't mention actually earlier is about time management that some people are saying they are so extremely busy. And they don't understand how I can lose uh, 16 kilograms of my body mass and still be busy. So um, actually there's something you should know, it's a big secret of the future and about the current present tense, that mobile phones right now work anywhere in the world. Can you believe it? Mobile phone can do emails, WhatsApp, it can do uh, phone calls. And the most amazing thing is, it has mobile applications, you can do your online banking, you can receive SMS, 
And this is amazing. You know what it means? The future is right now in your pocket. You can actually be in the gym, be on the treadmill, on the cross trainer, or on the bike, and you can still do your emails, and you can receive a phone call. And on top of that, you can do your emails. You can reply WhatsApp. You can SMS from the bank about receiving current bank transfers. You can log on your mobile phone and do a bank transfer right out of your pocket. That means the time is not against you. This is called the anti-clock theory. It's actually, it happened before and it still does, that I just used mobile phone to transfer money around the whole and the money arrives within maximum 24 hours. Some countries even in less than 60 seconds. So when people are telling me, you know, I'm so busy, I cannot do sports, I cannot go out eat something, I cannot fly anywhere, I cannot travel anywhere, I cannot go to the park, I cannot out for dinner. I said, that's crap. Because one day got 24 hours. So please, again below this video, comment part, write down how many hours per day are you going to sleep every day. Is it 5? Is it 10? 12? I think even we got a hangover from last night. 10 hours would be more than enough. And probably wake up in the morning with a big headache and drink a nice hangover tea. And you still got enough time to walk, to sports, lift some weights, or to meet a friend. The sad thing is and right now people are only sharing the moment, sharing pictures, but they don't have time. And actually, the, frankly speaking, most of our good clients or good friends, although we are in the same city, maybe only 20 minutes away from each other, only meeting four or five times a year. Only a phone call, email, message. So if you would like to manage your time, you check how many hours has one day, how many hours I'm going to sleep, how many hours I'm using for eating, how many hours I'm using for transportation back and forward, and the top priority is when can I use my phone? Just an example, okay? Prioritizing the time. If I'm going to meet somebody in half an hour and I'm already late, you know what I would do? I would not use my phone right now, finish the email, then go to the elevator down I would directly go to the elevator and finish the email in the elevator. By that time you arrive, the email is already finished. Which means you're already saving at least 5 to 10 minutes of your day. Manage your time. Then, you know, that's actually a cool thing we have in our company right now also. And that's actually a big, big key point about time management. If somebody is not in the office and out for lunch, we're not going to tell the people calling, you know, he or she is out for lunch, please call back later. Because later it's getting worse. You go back to the office, you have six, seven missed phone calls. You know, what you do? Call everybody back, it takes an hour or two only finish up those phone calls, you know. What you can do instead? Forward the office phone call to any mobile phone. 
Doesn't mean the person out for lunch. Maybe go to the port to pay the shipment. You have to go out buy something. Maybe you have to exchange something. We meet a customer all on the way. So, and this is only in Shanghai or Beijing. That counts for the whole world. Which means, if somebody travels in another country, the phone will still probably work, wouldn't it be? We call a local number. You are somewhere in Europe or the States, you pick up your phone like here in the office. Same thing, same path. And the most crazy thing is about all what I said, on top of that, the sugar on the top. Okay. You know what it is? You can fly around the world in 24 hours. Somebody telling our company, we got no time to meet. That's crap. Our tickets are already very cheap now. No matter the economy been in the first place. Foreign have lower fares than ever before. You know? Imagine, right now, I can fly from Shanghai to Dubai and I arrive in 10 hours straight. You know? In no time. If you take a red eye flight, you get in the airplane at night time, next morning you already arrive and do your meeting. How funny is that? So, next point, managing finance. See, never put all your money into one basket and pot. Put it somewhere else. One you can put for shipments, one you can put for investments, one you can put for properties, for example. So the actual reason why I mentioned about offering such benefits to our employees pretty simple and straightforward. See, most of the people spend the money in the wrong place. Like, they have uh, no funds available, but use the most of the money and time to spend on entertainment, for example, which is completely fine. But for example, I had some uh, business partners, they or some tenants even from my apartments. They would say they can't pay the rent, and they must be they, they can pay, but don't pay that price. They must lower the cost. But actually, they don't really calculate the cost because they don't calculate the, the way and time you spend from getting one place to another. For example, your office is at here, okay, and you work at here. It is much more convenient to go from point A to point B and consider the cost and time of going back and forth. If you then think about cutting the cost of your property, for example, and you move to here, the cost maybe might be a little bit lower if you're on this side, but not considering if you drive your own car, even bus, metro, whatever it is, you pay actual money to go back and forth, and more time than before. So in the end, maybe you spend more time and more money on it. But the point is not about this in particular. It's also about if you invest in something, you get a return. And most of the people that invest in our projects, they are, I wouldn't say they are very rich and very poor. They're just average. But most of them, actually would have enough funds available to run their own business, you know? But they spend it on all unbelievable stuff you never thought of. Had people coming up saying they have no money for the next project, but all the return already got several times. And then they would say, yeah, but next week I'm going to a music concert, you know, I'm going to spend uh, $5,000 on a VIP ticket, you know, for me and my family, you know, uh, which 
actually doesn't make any sense because of course entertainment is important for yourself makes you happy but the way I see it from a person opinion is we have to sacrifice our lives right now to have it better in the future had two extremely amazing cases one guy was selling a property to us and we're talking about half million dollars okay we go to the transfer office and we tell this person the check the money available the transfer arranged let's go he arrived in a delay like not even on time In the middle of nowhere, all of a sudden, he says, Guys, we will not finish the transfer today. I don't want to get the money today. I have to go and pick up my child from school. I have a look around him. What the hell? Half million dollar, you just like walk away like this because you have to go to a school pick up your chat. See, fine, fair enough. He's a bit selfish to himself, people around him, and his family. If somebody wants to make a half million dollar, should consider it as a plus and benefit from him and for his family not only for family values because I think also and that's actually a strong argument statement I make right now is if you got a family you're not the only person have a child a man is not a single father and the child comes from the sky. There will be a parent, father, mother, sister, brother, wife, will be around where you can say, today I cannot pick up my child from school. Please somebody else come and pick up my son. I take half an hour more and I finish the deal. Second part we had in Dubai, we were about to leave Dubai, last minute, more than 15 people said they want to meet before we leave, urgently, quickly, quickly. Before, five, six months, only, yeah, okay, let's meet that tomorrow, okay, and tomorrow, and tonight. Maybe it's a thing in the Middle East, I'm not sure about it. Yanni, let's meet later, inshallah, maybe seven, eight, oh, Yanni. Okay, whatever. But one guy came up and said, I know tomorrow you're leaving. Okay. Today I will not come. I have to drop my son to school. I said, we were arranging that already for a week. Okay. So, uh, seriously? We recommend him one thing. I said, you and your colleague will drive your son to school and then you come. No way. Must be same time, same place. Which is extremely annoying because people think they are the only hot sauce in the world okay but there are many other key factors around influences buyers sellers trading partners all around it's egoistic so um, because of this of one person delays whole system and day is a completely mess because 
maybe from 9 to 11 we scheduled one meeting not only out of the whim we make a whole day schedule 9 to 11 12 to 1 1 to 3 maybe the person we meeting at maybe 1 to 3 is waiting for the answer and the outcome of the meeting in the morning what we tell him later please come later I can't tell you right now or we'll just sit down to get a cup of coffee and say thank you so very much for coming you know actually I don't know yet about the other person because he had to pick up his son from school or drop him to school and uh, but it's nice coffee or tea and cookies we have very nice and uh, I will email you goodbye have a good day yeah thank you for coming I mean this person that person probably go mad and if this window they could open up probably will probably take us and pull us out of the window you know? which actually is not nice but has a negative impression about us I hope you understand same thing counts for meetings you know? we are accepting meetings for those people where we think we can work with them no matter they are buying, they are selling, distributing no matter what it is we have to make a clear structure and plan and if we simply can't handle it please let us know in advance not spontaneously Sebi? thanks so next part yeah some apple juice also okay sometimes the good thing is do enough sports you can still drink juice Um, also one more key point I think I have to mention because it's also very important people don't understand and I think after having to send so many emails about it have to stress it out for example we receive uh, documents with express mail service it's very important to know why I think because we have an email account, no printer in our office. What do you think? Why? One particular reason. See, people send us Excel files based on our requests as a form telling us, for example, about a pack of cookies. Yeah? So one costs one dollar. Do you think that's enough information for us? Why do we ask for a quote per container or per 10,000 pieces? Is it because we fed up with our life or we are boring or just wake up in the morning and think oh, oh let's do that, let's just make people's life miserable and ask them about the calculate for us how much are 10,000 pieces of crackers or cookies? Actually not. It's because we are mainly serving wholesalers or retailers and large entities. And those people want to know how much it would cost them to sell those items in 50 stores, for example. And we come to them and said, hey, uh, one package, one dollar, that's it. They would say, uh, what the hell? I mean, I have no idea how to calculate it. And if I need it or don't need it, how can you prove it to me? So it's our job to calculate products, sales, numbers, based on how many items, have been sold why they didn't sell this item where have they been selling it for long how long they have been selling it in which shelf space they have been selling it what target price they had all this information is 
very, very essential and is the key information we need. If we then head to a meeting and tell those guys we are prepared, we know exactly what you have been selling, what you didn't sell, why you sold it, why you didn't sell it, we can make an action plan. Then we ask for a quotation from those suppliers. We would say, for example, quote from me, orange juice, apple juices, 25,000 kilogram, one container, 40 foot, how much? Five container, how much? Not because we are boring, it's because we need to know. And the quotation via email is not enough. We need original documents delivered to our office. Why and what for? Because we want you to sit down, write down our company's address and phone number on it and deliver those files to us. If this deal is very important to you, then you can go to the post office or call any express mail service carrier and write down the address and details and ship your quotation in a professional and concerned manner to us. Very important. Later we receive those files and we arrange a meeting with our colleagues, clients, partners, investors and said this guy has a nice packaging. He obviously prepared the files in a concerned and professional manner. Then we can discuss in detail. Not we have to print out by ourselves. Because we want you to know that we are here. Our office is at here. Our phone number is at here. There are people actually from Monday to Friday from 9 o'clock until 6 p.m. sitting on this counter and receive documents and all the other pictures. Samples, also one key point. We cannot just put a juice on a package, an apple on a juice package and say, that's it. We need to see the actual product. We need to feel it, taste it, show it to our clients, let them taste it. See, you want some apple juice? I guess you like, because I have it in my hands and currently when you watch the video, you have nothing in your hands. So. Let's chess and drink some. Tastes awesome. You know what I mean? Now we want to know who is this person selling this juice? Is it a name? Is it a person? Is it only an email address? Who is it? Who is the person we're going to work with for the next 10 or 20 years? Personal meetings are very, very important. Documents, original files to our office. Quotations tell us how much are we going to talk about. Because later when we go to our clients, we must show them their numbers. We must tell them. If you are going to buy those items, it costs you for 50 stores half a million dollars. Why the information? Not only because they are boring, it's because retailers or bigger firms don't pay upfront to us. We have to pay first, then the shipment takes around four weeks, then we ship it to them. After they are selling it or receive the goods, 90 days after, they will pay us. So who is going to invest in the project? Us? 100%? No way! Our clients, partner, investors all have funds available. And those people who order maybe the chocolate or the juice or, the, or those crackers have to make a down payment. How do you make a down payment if they only know one package for one dollar? How do you make a down payment? There's no actual number on the table. An email I can change easily, but 
if you're sitting down and you're preparing the documents, invoice, agreement, labels, then we can take it serious. I hope you understand. Then hmm, those crackers are nice. They look awesome. Good sample. See? Now we know who, what it is. But we only got some pictures here. Oh. The product is amazing. Order it now. Prepayment now. I mean, do you actually understand? There's some people, they draw a piece of a cake on a piece of paper and they tell you to pay down payment 100%. I mean, do all the birds fly around your head? Anyway, next point. Influences. So how do you think you're going to sell those sticks or crackers to the whole world? Is because you got a nice haircut or like this? No, make it make it like this and you can sell better. You think so? No, it's because you got those glasses. Oh, why, why do you think you can sell this one? Is it because yeah, it's beautiful or uh, it's so nice? Um, no, your name is amazing. No, it's your company's name's color and logo is the top. No, it's not. Actually, I think nobody cares about that, you know. They know what they care about. They care about what you do and how much money you spend on them. See, if you go to a big hotel group, for example, they will check. Who are you? If you are spending, for example, every year with your company four to five hundred hotel nights with them, you know, you may get the attention. You know? If you only come up and say, hey, my name is Peter, hey, you want a cookie? 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 I sell you one cookie, one dollar, one package, you know. They will not even look at you, you know. They say, okay, very nice. You come to the meeting and check in our hotel, you know. One night, two nights, say thank you for coming, we get back to you, you know. Nothing will happen. But the more money you spend, the more attention you get. Which means you are buying your respect from them. So, have you asked yourself the question, if you come to the meeting, why we recommend you to use our company account with Emirates or Qatar Airways? Interesting, right? Interesting. Maybe we can uh, think about it before I get into details right now. So which means you have to build peer-to-peer -peer networks. You are buying from me, I buy from you. He is buying from you because of me. Maybe I should uh, maybe more translate it for you. Okay. We are a food learning company. Important. Okay? So, we are selling sticks and crackers, for example. Okay? Then, we are booking, for example, 500 hotel nights with one hotel group. Or 500 flight tickets per year. Because we do that and we did that and we're still doing it, we can approach the other big firm and tell them, hey guys, 
obviously we're spending quite a sum of money in your place. Let's do something. That's more likely to get something done, you know? Then you would just come and approach them directly and say, hello, my name is Peter, I would like to sell tacos to you, you know? So actually, most of the time, it is not even necessary to talk to those people and approach them with the cookies because once you realize one little secret, the whole world is yours. It's called dealing indirect with the client or with the supplier or any firm you want to work with. Basically, the only thing you have to do is you have to register your membership card number or your company account number, your names, everything on it, and you start spending money with them. You will see sooner or later, maybe later, maybe sooner, you will get their attention anyways. And they will already use their databases to analyze those details. For example, if I am selling um, hotel rooms, I want to know who are the people checking my hotel. And uh, based on larger groups, they actually also have larger hotel groups and hotels, like I say, 1,000 in the whole world. They have sales team analyze the whole day, who is that person checking my hotel? What does he come from? Why did he came from? They want to know everything about you. They even want to know what you eat for breakfast. They know what kind of shoes you like. They know you eat sunny side up or, or omelette. They know exactly what kind of food you're eating. They know exactly what shampoo are you using. They know how much soap you're using every day. They know how your bag sheet is like. They know everything about you. Your personal life, your company life, everything they know because as soon as you log on their wi-fi they know exactly what communication is coming in and out because they have the right to check it so if you want to build peer-to-peer -peer networks no need to actually approach those firms you start spending money slowly here there here there get membership number now apply for it start spending money get the attention and you're all set but um, the last point here is called control see personal meetings are being arranged in our company based on the demand and on the strategic locations of our clients. One day we ask meeting in Beijing, one day in Dubai and one day in Shanghai. Why would we do that? It's because clients, partners and investors have different priorities. Sometimes most of the investors are not coming only from China. They come from the whole world. But you know, as a Westerner, it's difficult every time to go to the embassy, go to the consulate, Get your visa done, submit your documents, pick it up again, pay your fee. It is quite um, time intensive and you need to spend time on it. So that's why we decided people come to Dubai directly and they can still talk about the same topics, meet the same influencers that can make such purchasing investment or other decisions based on their requests you know um, that's why we decided because it's obviously difficult to handle five offices in three cities at the moment to not offer all the phone numbers in each office online and every employee gets the name card with different office address and phone numbers every employee gets the same name cards with the same address on it which means normal post deliveries and telephone calls 
they are all going to one specific place. They all come into Shanghai. No matter a person is sitting in Dubai, in Beijing or Shanghai, in which office, it doesn't matter. All the phone calls are going into the Shanghai office. If then somebody is calling this office and want to talk to our colleagues in Beijing or Dubai, they will forward the call to the other extension number. Could be also in a different city or even a mobile phone. Why would we do that? We want to avoid people are calling for five different phone numbers. Nobody knows where this person is at the moment or here and there, out of office, whatever. Save time. Somebody calling the office, forward it to the extension number. If this one is offline, which means they're out of office, forward it directly onto the mobile phone. In the whole world, people can pick up mobile phones and say, hello, how are you? How can I help you, right? And the worst thing that ever happen is, if you call a person, he or she is currently outside for a meeting, she or he will just pick up the phone and say, you know what, I got your phone call, drop me an email, I will get back to you. Make sense? And this is the same for deliveries of documents or samples. Everything is centralized and comes together in one place. And here we are sorting where this communication goes to. Which files go to which office? Nowadays, we can even scan all documents. We can scan them, forward them, and deposit them here. There's no need to put them in five different offices and arrange, arrange hundreds millions of phone calls and Skype calls and messages. Did you get documents, this one, that one? We know who those files were addressed. Every document we receive will be scanned and put on our database. Later, we can email these documents to the, uh, to the appropriate person who can access it directly. This is called time management. Make it more efficient for everyone. So if we call in a Shanghai number today, it doesn't mean the person is in the Shanghai office. It could be in Beijing, in Shanghai, or in any other office we have. So, that was a wonderful conversation there today. And I think, if there are any questions you may have, please let me know. You can post below this video. You can email us. Even the emails you are sending will be separated and shared by our teams. So if you, for example, email to China minus trade at csc minus shanghai.com we will still let people in all three different cities access, access those accounts and they can pick those mails from the server and see which emails are for Beijing, which one for Shanghai, which one Dubai and then we can organize those in detail. We can actually separate the work to each employee. And this is the key point that here. To summarize, today basically we're talking about time management. Organize your time. Be on time. Do what you say. Managing finances. Influencers, how we talk to big firms, controlling and centralized communication. If we can handle all those things with our clients, partners, investors, employees, associates, the whole world is easier and we can get our job done. Thank you again for Have a good day.
Do you mind asking some questions about uh, our companies and policies? Mm -hmm. So what I would like to know is, um, why do you think meetings are important? And uh, why would we choose people to come and see us? Well, usually we only will meet our potential partners that uh, we were working long term relationship. It's the reason we have to meet personally and know their companies and the key to the come to make the presentation of this company. But how about those firms that uh, don't know us and never met with us before? Who, uh, don't know us? Yeah. Who work, what do you mean, don't know us? Like they only send us one picture of a banana and say they are good bananas. Then we cannot meet them because we have to receive the price list and the proposal list. Have to have some document on the table before we meet, that otherwise what are we talking in the meeting? So do you think it's enough if somebody just sent us a picture of a banana and say one piece is one dollar? No, of course, we, then we cannot meet them because we're not a um, McDonald's. We cannot uh, like uh, everybody walk in and say hi like this. We have to have something on the table. And uh, please be aware, before you come meet us, bring your ID card with you because the, this is a very secure building. You have to register yourself with your ID before you come to meet us. And uh, appointment is important. Be on time is more important. So what is the criteria of people to come to the meeting apart from sending us the quotation? We have to talk about the, con the condition of the shipment because it's a very big volume. We always talk about a minimum four container, 40 feet. So there's a lot of details have to discuss. We cannot only talk this in the phone or during the video call. Uh, do you think it's important to stress out that not everybody can come to the meeting? If we meet everybody in the meeting, then our office will fall people because every day we have so many proposals, so many people require for meetings, so many people have phone call. We have to choose the best one for suit us. But what about those people um, that want to sell us something and say, please come and visit me? Is it possible? Um, for traveling overseas, we only will meet investors. Usually we don't meet suppliers unless we work with them for a long time. Then we will send our sales team to visit uh, their factory. But uh, for new suppliers, we will require the meeting in our office. And uh, recently we get some emails from people saying, uh, please, please come to the exhibition stand. Uh, in Europe or the States or in Middle East. Is it worth going to an exhibition to meet a supplier there? Um, for the um, food fair suppliers, we will only attend uh, sometimes, our, our procurement team only will attend sometimes in China. Or maybe overseas, but not very common because it's people come to us, not that we're going to them. So what's your opinion about those uh, suppliers that told us they're exporting to more than 100 countries for the last 20 years and then they can't give us a quotation of pricing? That's very interesting, you know, because uh, we have uh, several suppliers told us they have been exporting more than 100 countries, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they are trading capital a few million dollars, everything, but... Uh, Later on, turns out that um, there's no price list they can give to us, and even we require a meeting for the uh, further discussion, they cannot even afford their flight ticket. Which I don't understand that uh, where's the money they made? Is it uh, they all donate to the no profit organization, or maybe I don't know, maybe they are doing charity all the time. And uh, for the meetings, like we obviously in China, foreigners have to get a visa to arrive. Uh, do you think it's safe for foreigners to issue for them a visa letter uh, and we don't know when they arrive, when they depart? Yeah, we have to know their flight booking before issue the company invitation. Otherwise, if they overstay or something, our company have to take responsibility for it. So for our company, if we offer any invitation letter, we at least require a flight booking plus hotel booking. So uh, to summarize now, do you think uh, we would allow our clients to have a tourist visa to visit our company in Beijing or Shanghai? 
You can visit our company with your tourist visa, but later our company won't take any responsibility if you have any um, delay or you have your visa expired. Then we cannot issue any document to assist you. Has it ever happened that people didn't get their visa for Chen when they visit us? Yes, it's happened before. So for the people who cannot get a visa in China, we also have a Dubai office and you can make an appointment in Dubai and meet our colleagues in Dubai. Conclusion, anything you want to say? Uh... Conclusion is we'll, we try best to have uh, like everybody making money. We making money, our supplier making money, our buyer making money, everybody should make money together. We should cooperate together to develop together.